So Jamal Charlo will face a Polish contender, Marseille Sulecki. Marseille Sulecki is a six foot one with a 68 inch reach Polish fighter. He's around the top 10, top 15. It's definitely a step up from fighting Martial, but it's definitely a let down from being groomer to fighting Jaime Mangia. Now, Showtime has released a schedule up until July. I'm going to go through it real quickly because I'm not going to make a video discussing every single fight. March 26, we will get Tim Zhu fighting Terrell Gasha. We will also get Michael Rivera on the undercard fighting Joseph Adorona in the 10-round bout. We'll also get Edwin Rodriguez versus Juan Jose Velasco. So that's that card on April 9. I'm going to do a quick prediction of those cards. I got Tim Zhu winning, Michael Rivera winning, and Edwin, Rod Edwin Rodriguez winning. On April 9, Erickson Lubin versus Sebastian Fundora. I think, uh, I don't know, that fight is a 50. I don't think Fundora is a good fighter, but Lubin has a suspect chance. So I think Fundora possibly could knock him out. That fight is for the interim WBC light middleweight title. Also, they have for the Coleman event. Tony Harrison versus Sergio Garcia. You know what's sad? They got Brian Perella fighting also on the undercard. But Brian Perella should be the one fighting Sergio Garcia because he beat Tony Harrison when they fought. But nevertheless, I think uh, Sergio Garcia wins that fight. Tony Harrison also has no chin whatsoever. Kevin Saladgo will fight Brian Perella. I don't know who Kevin Saladgo is, but he is an undefeated fighter. Let's take a quick look at him, Kevin. Suladgo, Kevin Suladgo. Never heard of him before. Kevin Suladgo, boxer. Kevin Suladgo, Zambono. 14 wins, no losses, no knockouts. He's a Mexican fighter. Yeah, he hasn't been anyone of note. Then April 16, we already know about this fight. Errol Smith Jr. versus Yugas. On the undercard, Rajab Butayev will fight. Amantia Satonis. I think Butayev wins that fight and wins by stoppage. Brandon Lee will fight Zachary Ococho. Ocho. Brandon Lee is a, a fighter that's still a prospect, but a lot of people view him as a fighter that could win a championship one day. The guy he's fighting is Zachary Ocho. Uh, yeah, he has 21 wins, two losses. Seven of his wins come by with knockout. Supported weekend fighter does not have any wins of note. On May 14, we will get Brian Castellano versus Jamal Charlo for the Undisputed Championship at Light Middleweight, the rematch. On the undercard, the coming event will be Jaron Ennis versus Castillo Clayton. Castillo Clayton, I know him. He's a Canadian fighter. Uh, I've seen him fight a couple times. Let me just take a quick look at his box rec. Who has he beat of note? I remember once I did watch a fight for him. But this was way back in the day when I watched a fight for him. Because he's been here for a minute now. He hasn't been pro since 2014. Yeah, I watched his uh, decision win over Johnny Navarrete. I remember that. I watched that live. But he has zero wins of note. Maybe DeMarcus Corley. You can say he's a win of note. But that was... Marcus Collier with 32 losses. He did have a draw with Sergey Lipinets. So that's that. I expect Jaron Ennis to win this fight. But maybe he can test Ennis. On May 21, we got David Benavidez versus David Lemieux in Phoenix. Also on the other card, we got Yovis Gamboa versus Jorge Cota. Gamboa is a prospect with five wins. No losses, all five by knockout. I've never seen a fight either. Holvis Gomez. Let's also take a quick look at his box rec. Holvis Gomez, five wins, no losses, for knockouts. I guess he's a guy that they're trying to push quickly. Let's look at his amateur record. On box rec, it says he had an amateur record of 23 wins, no losses. I mean, 23 wins with 10 losses. So, yeah, I don't know who he is, but maybe a good prospect. And then on May 28, we got Gavron Davis versus Rolly Romero. Uh, 
they don't have any information about the undercard. And on June 4, we got Stephen Fallon Jr. defending his WBC and WO titles versus Daniel Roman. That's his mandatory opponent. Daniel Roman is a fantastic fighter. I'm hyped for that fight. And on the card, we see David Morrell again versus Kelvin Henderson. I'm not sure who that is. And then we see Jamal Charlo. We already talked about that. I'm going to leave that for the final one because that's the most notable fight. Also on July 9, we see Mark Magzeo fighting Ray Vargas. Two undefeated fighters. Mark Zeo will defend his featherweight title. Uh, that's a 50 50 fight. I like that fight a lot. Now let's talk about Jamal Charlo versus Marce Soleski. Marce Soleski is not a fighter that people, a lot of people know of, but he's a decent, crafty fighter. He doesn't have much power. He has 30 wins, two losses. 11 of his wins have come by with knockout. But look, he does have a win over Jack Kukle. He has a win over Hugo Centeno Jr. Uh, who, who else has he be of note? I guess that's it. He has a win over Praska. He gave Daniel Jacobs a good fight. He got dropped in the last round. He got outboxed very wide by Demetrius just injured. And oh yeah, he did beat Gabriel Salo. So this fight, it's not a horrible fight. And I understand, I'm not going to criticize Jamal Charlo because he is, he did try to make the him and Magia fight. He went out. He put an offer to him and Magia. They gave him the rights internationally for this one. They gave him the Mexico rights for Azteca. They didn't want it. They didn't want it. They wanted to have a co pay per view between the zone and Showtime, which is impossible for a fight at that magnitude. It's not a Floyd Mayweather versus Manny Pacquiao. My understanding is it's only been four fights in history that have been co promoted between two promotions Lance Lewis and Mike Tyson, Floyd Mayweather versus Pacquiao, and Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury, their second and third fights. That's it. All those fights were big fights. Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder, their second fight made 850,000 pay per view buys. Their third fight made 600,000 pay per view buys. Pacquiao versus Mayweather, 4.6 million pay per view buys. Tyson versus Lewis was 1.9 million pay per view buys. So that's millions of millions of dollars made the networks get together. This fight does not make millions of millions of dollars. Jamal Chol versus him Mangia. And my understanding is Showtime didn't want to put it on pay-per-view. They want to put it on regular Showtime. So I don't know. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. But I'm not going to criticize Jamal Chol too much about this one. He did try to make a fight. But hopefully he fights uh, Benavides. Anyone fights someone of note later on this year. That's it. Uh, give me a thumbs up in the comment section below. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Sadiq Boxing out.